how do you dominate search when it comes to podcasting? How do you become the person that people are going to and binging and consuming all their content? And how does your podcast rank alongside the ones that you want to be ranking alongside in the categories that you're in? Today's conversation is part four with my guest, Anthony. And if you've been following along the last three episodes, we've talked a lot about podcast SEO. So in the first episode, we talked about what is podcast SEO and why you should care. The second part was the focus on visibility. So how to increase your visibility on Apple and Spotify, how to rank higher on Apple and Spotify by increasing your completion rate was the third episode we did together. And today we are talking about how to dominate search. And we are rounding out our conversation with the idea of building relevancy. Before you continue on this conversation, please be sure to leave us a rating and review. I love to know how the content is landing for you, what you are loving from our conversations together, what you want to hear more of, and maybe what you just feel like you need to learn right now. So leave us a rating, leave us a review, let me know. And I cannot wait to hear from you. Before we get into our conversation, let's meet Anthony. Anthony is the best-selling author of the book, Podcast Made Simple, and the co-host of Why Your Podcast Isn't Growing. After spending three years working on a degree that wasn't taking him any closer to the life that he wanted to live, Anthony was determined to build a successful business in podcasting. And despite having zero experience in business or podcasting, he dropped out of college to go all in on a business. Fast forward to today, he's now a two-time best-selling author and has generated multiple six figures with a coaching business, helping podcasters grow and monetize their shows. Let's get into our conversation with Anthony. Welcome back to the podcast, Anthony. I'm so happy to have you here. I know. I'm really excited. Part four, right? Part four, the final one. And we've focused on so many different aspects over the last few weeks. We talked about that discoverability piece. What Mm. is podcast SEO and why you should care about it? The visibility piece of increasing your visibility on Apple and Spotify, and then how to increase that user engagement and rank higher on Apple and Spotify and get that completion rate close to 100% as you possibly can. But in today's Mm. conversation, we're wrapping it all up together and we're talking about building relevancy and how to dominate search. So. I'm going to pass it to you first, and I want Mm -hmm. to ask you, what are you looking for when you say building relevancy? Love that. So when it comes to building relevancy at this point, if you've been following along or if you're just new here, really what we mean is building relevancy in terms of being intentional of the specific keywords we want to rank for. Right. So rather than before, when we first got started, when it comes to discoverability, which is finding high traffic keywords to rank your episodes for, this one is a bit more like front facing, i.e. okay, looking into the future, which keywords do I want to rank for? Mm-hmm. How do I start incorporating, i.e. these three keywords in every single podcast episode title if I can? Now that won't Ooh. always be possible, okay. but again, the intentionality is what matters here. We want to ask ourselves, Number one, really, what direction do I want my podcast to go into? What do I want to be known for? What, it's kind of like building your brand and relevancy. If someone thinks of, you know, The Rock, they might think of tequila or wrestling or, you know, movie style. If someone thinks of, you know, hustle on social media and grinding online, they might think mm-hmm. of Gary Vee back in, you know, early 2000s. Yeah. But the point here is they're building relevancy for a particular term, for particular phrases. And for us, we're trying to do that when it comes to search. So if your podcast is about, let's say, real estate or real estate investing, I'll probably say get a bit more specific with the keywords you're searching for, like, or or the keywords you want to rank for. Is it, you know, is it, you know, I'm not a real estate agent or a real estate guy, but bear with me. Is it kind of multifamily? Is it kind of, Mm -hmm. you know, is it house flipping? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, first time buyer? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, all of these different, it could be so many different things. So think about which one of these terms is heavily related to me. Instead of going for business, is it more specifically lead generation? Is it more so content marketing? Is it more so podcast marketing rather than just business? Or is it sales and marketing? Mm -hmm. Again, being specific with what search terms you want to rank for. Once you've kind of mapped out, okay, I want to rank for not just business. No, no, no. I want to be a bit more specific. I want to rank for 
content, you know, content marketing, right? And then you realize, okay, the other thing I want to talk about is also kind of, you know, for example, content marketing. I also want to talk about lead generation. And mm-hmm. I also want to rank for, trying to think of a, of a, of a third media. one. I also want to, social media marketing, right? Every episode that you put out and your content strategy, the, the guests you have on, they all have to really loop back into these three keywords, right? Mm. So you pick the keyword you want to rank for, then you build out your content strategy moving forward to incorporate these keywords. Now, if you think about building relevancy as essentially giving Apple and Spotify all these episodes about these topics with the episode title optimized, with the show description optimized, with your show notes optimized with these keywords, we're building what we call digital real estate. We're building to Apple and Spotify relevancy for that keyword. When someone types in, you know, lead generation or, 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 or social media marketing, content marketing, you're now able to show up more and more and more because you've covered that topic so many times in combination with a high listener retention time mm-hmm. and an attractive cover rat and all the other pieces we spoke about in, in the previous episodes. Okay, I love that so much. So this building relevancy comes from the keywords that you're using primarily. How do, like, what is what what is next? You know what I mean? Like what's next in this in this puzzle piece, I guess? Like, you, you know, you're trying to build this relevancy and you're trying to dominate search. So you have your keywords and you're trying to become the top, I guess the top like podcast that comes up when you're searching these words. But does that mean that you have to, so like this podcast is about podcasting. Would that mean that if I want to rank for podcasting, then I have to try and put the word podcasting in every single title if I can, if it makes sense? If it makes sense. And that's only if it makes sense. Yes, I would say so. I think that you lose nothing from that, but you have everything to gain. Mm. Because again, you're, if you think about it, like you're just giving Apple and Spotify the days they need to rank your show properly and correctly. So if your podcast is about podcasting or is about anxiety or is about any anything that we kind of spoke about, right? Having that in every single title, build a massive catalog and real estate where if someone types in how to reach anxiety, Apple and Spotify, they're going to maybe recommend yours, right? You're going to start mm. ranking high because it's essentially saying to Apple and Spotify, this podcast is absolutely about anxiety. This right. podcast is absolutely about podcasting. And it gives them more conviction to rank it higher and higher and higher and higher. Hmm. Right? So where to go from here would be, is my podcast content strategy specific and kind of focused? If it is, podcast SEO will work wonders for you. If you kind of have a scattergun approach, where it's about everything and anything, it's going to be far more difficult because your podcast isn't just about these three main components. You know, so that becomes a bit more tricky. So for our clients, we always encourage them to revisit their content strategy, be more intentional about what topics you will cover. You can actually look at your podcast analytics and ask yourself, which topics seem to be popping off, right? Mm-hmm. Which, 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 which are the topics that are clear winners in 2023? And what are the trends that I'm seeing? If you can see a clear trend with, let's say, a specific topic, lead generation, that keeps getting loads and loads of sales, then you know, moving to 2024 and beyond, okay, let me just cover that in more depth. Let me cover different angles. Let me cover different situations. Let me start ranking for this topic more and more because number one, my audience clearly love it. Number two, I'm getting the most amount of traction so much doing something right. And number three, you're having more focus with your SEO strategy when it comes to ranking for that term. Hmm. I like that a lot. This is this is actually, this is really cool. And you're avoiding the keyword stuffing, which I think is really Correct. important. Correct, yes. That's <laughs> you're a, like, absolutely one of the do most not do that. <laughs> Things oh, not like, to how did I forget that? Thank you, Simona. Yes. <laughs> what to do in 2024. Okay. So that said, I want to ask you if this, you know, this piece of relevancy, if your podcast ratings and reviews impact this at all, I don't know fully, but from what I've heard and from what I understand, your podcast reviews are great for like personal clout, really but they don't actually add a lot of value in terms of the algorithm of the podcast player. Whereas Mm. the ratings, Mm. like the ratings 
make a difference because it signals to the algorithm like this is something that people like because it's getting ratings. Mm. Is that true? That is correct. So I mean, you know, oh. I'm going to say correct. The, the data isn't isn't clear, so don't you know, don't Fair. hold me on that, right? But well, like, I was um, just hoping yeah, that, from... like, I just solidified my place as a producer with that. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> no, for sure. So I think I think what it is is like they don't publicly say it, right? They don't publicly Apple and Spotify. I don't think they publicly kind of state that you know these things help when it comes to ranking. But again, they're not incentivized to say that to the public. Yeah. Because exactly. what happens if you realize that all you need to do to rank high is get 100 reviews? Well, you just get 100 reviews. Exactly. So to them, it's like, it's, it's just one small piece that does help. They're not going to publicly state it because people will just hack the system. I would love to hack the system if I could and just oh. you know, get, get my clients ranking everywhere. I would love that. But it forces us to, again, think about, we, we keep going back to this, think about podcast SEO in a more holistic way mm -hmm. it's not just you do this one thing and you, your podcast explodes I wish that was the case I'll be you know I'll be on the beach right now I probably won't be on the beach because I think I'll probably still be working but I'll be a very <laughs> rich man let's put it that way right I like my work but my point being again is more holistic is understanding that it's not just like getting these reviews and that's going to blow things up or adding these skills and that's going to blow. no we've literally spoke about every piece of the podcast you know, we spoke about the the keywords themselves, the actual episode titles, your cover right to attract them in, you know, your user engagement in the other episodes talking about selling the listen of the episode to have a higher completion time. And yeah. we're now speaking about being intentional about the content strategy, building your content strategy so you rank for the right keywords. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not just this magic pill of this one thing. It's everything in combination done over a prolonged period of time that mm -hmm. gets you that higher ranking and gets you staying that. there as well. I love that. And I really like that you said done over a longer period of time, because I think there's this very false narrative right now that you're going to start a podcast and you're going to do five to 10 episodes and you're going to just explode and you're going to be I like, wish. Yeah, uh, uh, me too. And you know what, for some people it might, you know what I mean? It might happen that way. And for some people it might work out really well. And like, you know, maybe you've done all of the things properly and you you've tagged everything right. And you know, you've launched 10 episodes and you're in the top, you know, 1% podcasters. Like, maybe that happens to you. And if it does, like, please come back and tell us. But I think for the most part, there's a there is a quite a long game when it comes to podcasting. It's not something mm. that you do just to get rich quick. And I think that, you know, people have seen other people's success, because nowadays, everyone can create, right? Everyone can have their platform, everyone can share what they want to share on their platform, which is super powerful. And at the same time, just because you have airwave space doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to listen, right? You have to earn people listening. Was that another Absolutely. social media clip? No, that was another social media <laughs> clip, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, where are we? No, you, you, you're totally <laughs> right. You're totally right. You have to earn people's listen because everyone's attention nowadays is one is getting shorter and smaller and people just so many things going on people are out there who are literally skirting and completely missing and ignoring their mother's phone call their father's phone call you know that's that's the world we're living in nowadays so it's really important like you mentioned that is this is all of these pieces and, and actually keeping people's attention not just attracting them but also keeping them and then retaining them for a long period of time it's not an easy thing to do at all but it's something that's worth investing the time to understand mm -hmm. and apply on your own shows agreed i agree with you fully and also you know, when you look at something, so for example, I'll give you another example. So we, within my agency, we tested Pinterest for, for my content, for my personal content this year, mm. because we just wanted to see how it would go, how it would perform. And my right hand in business, she helps with, oh, she does everything for, for my brand pretty much at this point. And she's also a Pinterest expert. That's what she like specializes mm. in. And I published a blog in January of 2023 and mm. it popped off in August of 2023. Wow. And that blog on Pinterest, that pin absolutely exploded. It had like 44,000 views or something like that from going from like not very many. And it's because it was tagged properly. And it's because mm. people were searching for those terms. And so just because someone isn't searching for something right now, doesn't mean mm. that your content might not also be relevant to them in a month from now. You know, you mm. think about it was a blog about launching a podcast. Okay. Mm. People launch podcasts all year long. But people specifically launch podcasts at the beginning of the year and after the summer, mm. because it's like at the beginning of the year, you're all inspired. And at the end of the summer, you're like, let's do this before the end of the year. So it makes sense. 100%. Right? 100%. I love that. And again, it's building kind of 
that relevancy again you know having mm-hmm. that timely content and when it comes to building relevancy it's also important to recognize that it's more of an authority play as well mm-hmm. right associating your brand with a topic makes you that authority when you talk about it so often and so much you become the go-to person for that particular thing when you talk about a bunch of different things it's not really as relevant and and like you mentioned having timely content it's so important because we have cycles, things kind of happen. So what we encourage our clients to do when it comes to their content strategy and building relevancy is asking yourself, right now for my content, I'm focused in on best strategies for 2024. Mm-hmm. You know, three things I learned about podcast growth in 2023. These would be terrible titles, so I wouldn't copy them as a framework. However, however, that's the gist of the content. Not me again, writing them why? down over here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but again, why? Because it's timely and relevant content. People mm-hmm. right now are trying to figure out how do I improve my content strategy in 2024 with podcasting? So we talk about that and have podcasting, again, as a keyword in our titles. But it's relevant because people are searching that in right now and it's timely. Yeah. So for you listening right now, whatever industry you're in, you might not listen to the news. I'm not a big fan of the news. I didn't listen to tons of it. Don't yeah. find it, you know, don't find it super, you know, <laughs> don't I don't think I've turned on the news since way. like 2019, okay? <laughs> so it's no, no, neither have I. <laughs> Ask yourself, what's going on in my industry mm-hmm. that is generating demand for a particular topic? YouTubers are phenomenal at news jacking, at keeping relevant because they understand that it's about where's this wave going. You shouldn't always try to ride the wave, you know, like you're someone in you know Australia or something. But <laughs> it's important to incorporate it from time to time to make sure you're keeping it timely. Because what's happening is there's a huge demand for a particular topic in your industry. Your, if that's in your industry, you can just add those keywords, you know, people will be searching in on Apple and Spotify and you can kind of siphon off some of that value because again, people are actively searching those particular topics in huge amounts of volume around this concentrated period of time Mm -hmm. because of the time and because of what's going on in current affairs or within your industry. So I love how you pointed that out because that's so, so important of having timely and relevant content. Mm, But I love everything that you just said about it because, you know, it has to be timely and relevant, but also like there's ways to be able to jump on that sort of bandwagon and get your message in there with everything else. So, you know, on my, on this podcast, when all the AI stuff started becoming really like prominent, really prevalent out there, I had uh, a guest on my podcast, Mark Ronick, and he Mm -hmm. runs a community. It's called next gen podcaster and it's all AI based. Those four episodes I, I honestly, I think the, there was like an increase of like 540% in listenership. I'm not even kidding you. Like wow. it was absolutely outrageous. And I was like, what is happening? Like I thought, like I thought that mm. there was just like a glitch in the algorithm, but no, it was the timing of the content going out, the title of that content and how it was relevant to podcasters and creators who are listening to this podcast. So it all matters and it all makes so much sense. And I think, you know, it's very easy to get into like the daily grind of creating your show, producing your show, whatever. You said in a, in a previous episode that titling episodes is your favorite part. A lot of the times creators just look at it and they're like, get, like I'm just, I'm over it. Like I just mm. want to get the episode out there because I've done so much work. But it's mm. almost like a self-sabotaging thing that you really got to see it through. And you have to make those pieces equally as important as everything else you've done because you put all the time in the world into your interviews. But if your show notes suck and your title sucks, nobody's going to click on it. There we go, hundred percent. Clip number three. No, Clip I'm number three. That's it. <laughs> I'm just joking around. <laughs> would you agree with well, that? No, though? you're totally right. I, I would completely agree, and I, I think you mentioned the whole thing about like you know the self sabotage. Like, you know, it kind of reminds you of you know when you were like in high school and you had like exams and you study mm-hmm. all day and all night, and then it yeah. comes to the final week and you just can't be asked. You know, that's kind of like that with the, with the episodes, right? You, you get to the end when it matters most, and you're like, oh, whatever. And I think that attitude is, is natural, you know, you've definitely been there. Sometimes you're in a rush and it becomes very difficult to do those things. But when you do have the time, again, is the 80-20 rule. You can have mm-hmm. a shit, you know, you can have, can I swear on this podcast? Yeah, yeah, you you know, right. you can, <laughs> I swear all the time. You can have, you can have like a, a shit, you know, you can, you can have, okay, you can have okay content and package that content in a way that's super attractive, mm-hmm. that will get tons more 
you know, viewership and listenership. Yeah. And you can have kind of like incredible content that's packaged terribly mm-hmm. and it's not going to pick up traction. And it's mm-hmm. all of how you package it, your title, your, your the, the content. And, and again, all of these different pieces fitting in together nicely. And when it comes to podcast SEO and building relevancy, being intentional about the keywords you want to go after and then understanding is not just that, but everything else that comes with that, the cover art, the episode title, the intro, the outro, all your energy level, all of these different pieces is that, again, (laughs) the holistic view when it comes to podcast SEO, not just picking one bit and thinking, let's run with that. No, looking at the bigger picture understanding your listener's journey and optimizing each contact point from them finding and discovering your podcast to them seeing it, to them clicking it and deciding to listen, to them deciding to listen all the way to the end because of your hook, to them keeping listening because the energy you provide and the value you provide all the way to the end. Again, it's that listener journey and experience, optimizing every single point to keep them engaged. Beautiful. That was clip number four of the podcast. Amen that to was that. amazing. <laughs> amazing. Anthony, thank you so much for joining me on this four part series. I'm so grateful for your time and I'm so grateful for you being here. And I know that people are going to gain a lot of value out of this. So thank you. Thank you too. I've, I've had so much fun. I see one of the best interviews I've had in terms of the, the back and forth. I generally mean the back and forth, the energy. So I think you've done a smashing job here and I'm hoping the listeners, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you. Me too. Me too. And I hope that we hear from you once you're listening to this series. So thank you. And also go tell all your friends that you really enjoyed this interview. Okay. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Thanks, Anthony. You can't tell me that that was not a powerful conversation. Anthony is such a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the SEO and podcasting world. And he left so many tangible tips in this conversation that I know you can take and implement right away to your own podcast, to your own show, and to your own process. All of Anthony's links can be found in the show notes below, as well as my links. So be sure to connect with both of us. Let us know what you love from our conversation. Say hello. We cannot wait to hear from you. I will see you on the next one.